Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Ghost Layers Report. I'm here from Tokyo as always, Ryan. Now, as elections, national elections, will be coming up in the next few months here in Japan, it appears that Prime Minister Noda has gotten a little worried. Now, as reported by the Kyodo News Agency, Prime Minister Noda vows to examine possibility of um, zero nuclear dependency. Prime Minister Noda said Monday he will instruct cabinet members to consider what kind of challenges the government could face if it decided to reduce Japan's dependency on nuclear power to zero. Uh, the news agency uh, very keenly points out that this is the first time Noda has referred to the possibility of eventually abolishing all nuclear power plants in the country in the future. Uh, now, they do mention that he appears to be paying attention to public opinion. That's true. Um, now, this is after massive anti-nuclear protest around the country week after week after week after week and these protests continue getting larger and larger and larger on this channel here you have seen uh, examples of that of I myself has went out and videotaped and offered commentary of these protests we have to to remember though like I just mentioned national elections are coming up here in Japan as you all know the one thing that any political leader, regardless of the country, fears more than anything else is losing their own power. So it appears pretty clear here that Prime Minister Noda is worried about losing his power. When you see a political leader worried about losing his power, yeah, they start listening to the opinion of the people. And speaking of the opinion of, of the people here in Japan, we have um, the Asahi Shimbun reporting that close to 70% of people in Japan favor zero nuclear power plants by the year 2030. Now the report says here in the headline, the people have spoken. Well, I think the people have been speaking for quite a while here. And close to 70% of participants in a recent um, public discussion that went across here in Japan uh, was a series of public hearings on the new, uh, nation's energy policy said that Japan should be free of all nuclear power plants by 2030. Now this does put the um, central government in quite a position as they have been um, staunchly pro-nuclear and have pushed ahead of restarts of nuclear power plants despite overwhelming majority of Japanese people not wanting this Despite, like I said, there's been massive nuclear, anti-nuclear protests here in Japan, and they continue to grow and grow and grow, uh, at least from what I've seen here in Tokyo with the anti-nuclear movement, it just keeps getting larger and larger and larger, and it's obvious here. Now let's get into a few details about these public hearings a little bit, because it's quite interesting, right? It was a series of um, 11 public hearings that went across Japan. Uh, which began on July 14th and ended recently on August the 4th, which uh, with two, with a few separate sessions that went on in Takamatsu, uh, on uh, Shikoku, and Fukushima, uh, Fu Fukuoka, pardon me, in Kyushu. Now um, the central government presented three options during these public hearings for the uh, ratio of electricity to be generated by nuclear power in 2030, 0%, 15%, or between 20 and 25%. Now, participants at the hearing uh, who wished to give their opinions were first asked to choose one of these options before a selection was made about who would be able to speak and not to speak. So you see they kind of, the government try to control these public hearings a bit, but that didn't really work out for them. 68% supported zero nuclear power by 2030. 11% chose the 15% option. 16% favored the option between 20 and 25. 
I mean, it's clear. People in Japan do not want nuclear power. They're done with it. They're finished with it. Completely over with it. And it's not just these poll, these public hearings that came out that backfired on the on the uh, central government. It's also other. I mean, right now, Prime Minister Noda's um, approval rating is really low. And you have his national elections coming up. So, you know, what is he going to do to save his own government here? His uh, ruling party, the Democratic Party of Japan, has experienced massive uh, defectors from the party, including a prominent member, um, Ozawa, who left and took members of him and started his own party. And plus, have many other members who have left. So the government in Japan is collapsing. So they really have no choice but to go ahead with this national election, which the current ruling party, the Democratic Party of Japan, has still not set a date for it, which they have to do that pretty soon, or they'll be in violation of the Japanese constitution, then an um, immediate election will be forced to be called. So they, they don't want to push at that point. So they are going to announce an election pretty soon. But you see they're testing the waters here to see what their chances are going to be, see how they're going to play it to maintain their own power and keep their position in the government, find a way to get reelected somehow. So you can see here, Noda, at this point, has no choice but to listen to the actual people of Japan, the people that actually elect him. So it's going to be interesting to see how this is all going to play out. Uh, my personal take on this, when I'm analyzing this and following this, Noda's government's gone. I don't see how he's going to get reelected. And the uh, former ruling party, the Liberal Democratic Party, which has basically been in control of Japan since the entire post war period, I would be surprised if they end up with the government as well. What I'm thinking we're going to end up here is going to be some type of minority government. Uh, the left wing is probably going to get a lot more seats than they have in, in, in the past. Uh, of course, when we talk about left wing in Japan, we're looking at socialist and communist. Um, they look to be um, playing this kind of smooth, and they may get more seats than they normally do. So, more than likely, we're going to end up with some type of a mixed minority government, which that will present a whole other challenge. Will those, some of those parties combine and form a major coalition, which is kind of dirty pool when, they, when the people elect a minority government to work together to solve a major problem, and they turn around and establish a major coalition to smash that. So it will be interesting to see what happens here in Japan in, in the coming weeks and months as these type of things come out. But as right now, notice having to give in a little bit and actually start listening to the people of Japan. So we're going to see how this plays out here in Japan, okay? So until next time, this is me, Ryan. Uh, I want to thank you guys so very much for watching all these videos. Get this message out. Spread these videos around, all the forums and places everywhere, okay? So until next time, this is me here in Tokyo. Checking out.